So um, this guy is like star. This is maybe two prime. Two prime is actually star. Or looks like or special case the equation star, which is x dot equals f plus summation gj. So it look, looks like star with the drift is just the geodesic spray. Your control vector fields are what? The lifted yeah, the lifted, right? Okay, very good. So let's do that. So my family that I will compute, for which I will compute the Lie infinity, the Lie algebra, is just these guys, right? So S and the lifted guys. This is M left. So I'm going to do the brackets. I'm going to do the brackets. Because of the special structure, the lifted guys, any I here lifted, any J lifted, the knee bracket, direct knee bracket between them is zero. So we're going to rely uh, very much on the drift coming from the geometric acceleration. So let's do knee bracket between S and one of these guys. So this is, now that the partial derivatives, we, you need to differentiate with respect to the coordinates, the coordinates are Q's and Q dots. This is Y, J lifted, sorry. And Y, J lifted, as you see from here, is just zero on Y, J, okay? So when you differentiate this guy, you get zeros at the top. Down, you're differentiating just Y, J with respect to Q, so this is the Jacobian. When you differentiate with respect to Q dot, you get zero, right? I'm going to multiply by S, which is S, the first component is Q dot, and the second component is M inverse C negative. I will call this S2, just for brevity. Minus the other way around, so let's differentiate the S, which I just wrote here. So when you differentiate the first component with respect to Q, you get zero. Here you get identity, and here I get S2 with respect to Q. S2 with respect to Q dot. I'm just reminding you that actually S2, which the centripetal and Coriolis accelerations, they are typically quadratic in velocities. Okay? Who would say an example? I'm going to multiply by yj lifted, so this is 0 and yj. So let's see what we get. Zeros from there, and here we get yj, which is function of q only. Here we get something like partial yj, partial q, q dot, minus partial s2, partial q dot, yj. We got some. That's okay. Let's call this vector v. The first three components are just yj. The second are some complicated thing, functions of q and q dot. And let's do it one more time, please. So I'll do here yi with S and YJ lifted, everything lifted, of course. S with YJ lifted, this is the vector field V that I just got. So let's be patient and do it one more time. So let's differentiate this guy with respect to Q. So we here partial YJ, partial Q. Q dot is zero. I will call this for brevity V2. So this is partial V2, partial Q, partial V2, partial Q dot. Yi lifted is 0 and yi minus the other way around. So this is 0, 0, partial yi, partial q, and it doesn't have q dot dependence. Times v, which is yj and v2. So this is equal to, let's get the first n components 0, 0, 0, 0. So we got, when you do this kind of lead brackets, you, you'll always. For any y, i, and y, j, for any y, i, and y, j, you will always get here zero. Okay, what's what is down there? Let's get that. So we have partial v2 partial q dot times y, i, right? From here, minus partial y, i, partial q, y, j. Let's substitute one more time for V2. V2 is here. We need the derivative with respect to Q dot. So this is partial YJ, partial Q, YI. 
minus partial squared S2, which is very weird, but I mean, it's not, not very weird, but not very common either. And finally, we have partial YI, partial QYG. You can see the flavor of Jacobian of one with respect to Q's in the direction of the other, Jacobian of one, the other in the direction of the first. So actually, this guy, you can show that this is, we're going to call it symmetric product between YI and YG. You can show that this guy is the covariant derivative of YI in the direction of YG and the other way around. You can show that this term, just the last n components of the iterated Lie bracket is given by this formula. So we, we are defining a new operation on vector fields. These are just the y's, not the lifted. These are accelerations, okay, or forces. So we're defining a new operator, like the Lie bracket takes two vector fields, give you a vector field, tangent vector. Here, this symmetric product, it takes two acceleration vector fields and gives you an acceleration vector field. Why this is an acceleration vector field? Because in the lifted space, it's zero here and components are there. Okay? It doesn't affect it doesn't affect position, it affects the rate of change of velocities. So, professor, how does S2 appear there? Like S2 does not appear in the symmetry product. Yeah, yeah, I know, but what do you mean? So this definition is Okay, just wait. You, you will see it in a, in a, in a minute. So this is symmetric product. This is a symmetric product, okay? So it's an operation, this is an entry, an entry, so it takes two vector fields, takes two vector fields on Q and returns with the understanding that actually they are accelerations. How do you compute it? Well, here is a, a formula for it. But you can do it uh, the way we did it from the beginning. What? How is that? We did yi lifted s with yj lifted, right? We got what? The first n components are zeros. This is just for check for yourself. It will be always the case. And the last n components are the symmetric product, if you want to compute the symmetric product. And it's function of q's only. No q dots. Why is function of q's only no q dots? Because S2 is quadratic in velocity, and I differentiate it twice with respect to velocity. So no velocity dependence. Everything else is just Q. So it's perfectly, it's perfectly a vector field on Q now. Any questions so far? Did you get the answer, Mahmoud? Yeah. Because simply this definition of this formula it has the covariant derivative, the covariant derivative has S in it. So uh, there is a very important note here. So the Lie bracket on a side, remember x dot equals f plus g, j, u, j. The Lie bracket between f and one of these g, j's. The Lie bracket gives you what? The Lie bracket gives me a net shift in x, net shift in that x, right? So in the limit, in the limit, if you do it fast, you get an effective rate of change, an effective velocity, effective rate of change of x, okay? This is the, the Lie bracket. We have a new form of Lie bracket, which we call the symmetric product. It looks like the Lie bracket, but it's not. First of all, it's symmetric. If you swap yi with yj, you get the same. For the Lie bracket, it's q symmetric, get the negative sign. The important point here is that for Lie brackets, like I said, you get a, a velocity effect. Here you get an acceleration effect. So here you take two velocity vectors and generate an effective velocity. Here you're taking two acceleration vectors and generate an acceleration vector an effective acceleration, a rate of change, you will get a net shift in the velocity, which is in the limit, it's an acceleration. 
you see what I'm saying? Any question this regard? Because this is very important. So if y is dependent, if the y is dependent on q dot, this analysis this doesn't work. work. Yeah. This analysis doesn't work. You need to go and redo it from the beginning. Yeah, and probably you will not get the same. Any question you can treat it as general. This is why we're focusing on systems like like the chance is 95% in mechanics, your system would be on this form. Okay, we're rotating these systems to see what do we get. Accession are important in the sense that accession are just forces, right? So here we're creating forces. You can do balance. You can do balance by these guys, by symmetric products. It's not just a motion in some direction. It's actually a force in that direction. It can balance gravity, for example, right? Can ba balance any other forces. Okay. So with this, actually, we have a, a, an interesting theorem. Because remember, what, what we've been doing here, okay, we have a special class of system that actually can, you don't need this lecture, but you can go and treat it yourself. On this system, we try to do Lee brackets, because this is what we, what we know. <laughs> so we did Lee brackets, and we're gonna, we should continue. We just did second order, we should continue. So the Lee infinity of your family of vector fields, the vector fields are S and the lifted guys. Well, here uh, we have uh, two inner components. We have the first inner components and the last inner components. So this is the composition. We have the last N here. So these guys are related to the accelerations. These guys are related to velocities, correct change of positions. 